Hello everyone, it's Stephanie. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm sharing a fall card from Newton's Nook. I'm honored to be guest designer there this month. I decided to create a wreath out of all of these adorable images. So I chose several images from different stamps to stamp out onto masking paper and once I get those cut out then I will put them onto a stencil using washi tape. So I use the stencil to let me line up how I thought they would look nice on the card. I use the Newton's Nooked Frame Square Die to cut out my card panel out of some Nina Desert Storm cardstock. I'm using a post-it note to stamp the bottom of this image just so I can get the placement of the masking correct. And this is the easiest way, again, all of this is just the easiest way I've found to do this. So then I have the right place to line up the mask, and then I will actually stamp out the mask on the cardstock. I'm using the fade out ink because I'm going to be doing some no line coloring. After adhering the mask over the stamped image, then I will use the stencil and the next mask to find the placement of where to put my stamp. And so I'll apply my stamp directly over the mask and then I can pick it up with my MISTI and then I'll know exactly where to stamp that next image. And then I'll apply the mask again on top of where I stamped and then move on to the next image. And I will do the same thing over and over again. I will find where to position the mask Having the stencil allowed me to easily position it again and I could work my way around. So I'll just keep doing that and when you mask anything you just want to make sure whatever image you want in the front is the next image that you stamp. And so this was fairly simple but I really don't do this enough because it is time consuming. For me, having the images all stamped out on the mask really helps me be able to decide how I want to line up the card. So I really like to do that. Now the masking paper that I'm using is a new paper to me. It's a full sheet. It's actually for stickers. I'll have it linked below. It's a full sheet and you stamp on it and you can use it in your printer but I think somebody on Instagram is the one who um, inspired me to try. I really love it for stamping all the images out and then letting my scan and cut cut them all out. I hate fussy cutting. I would never cut out all these images by hand. Uh, that would never happen. It also adheres down really nicely if you're going to do ink blending. What I will warn you, it is not good for is doing backgrounds. Like if you want a snowy hill or something like that, it's a little too sticky and a few times I've tore my paper. As you can see here, I can lift it right away and it does a really good job. I'll continue to place each stamp on the mask where I get the perfect placement to build my wreath and stamp that again. I am double stamping each time with this fade out ink. I find I can see it really well and it makes it really easy to see where to color that way. I'll adhere my masking paper down and then continue to stamp a few little fall images I thought would add a lot to build this wreath. I wanted to do the no line coloring technique and I thought the Nina Desert Storm cardstock would look really nice for fall. So here's my wreath after I have it all stamped out and I'm ready to go ahead and do some no line coloring. So I'm starting with the darkest shade first and I'm just going to do, I'm not going to outline everything, I'm just going to go where I want the deepest colors and some of the shadows to be. So I'm using E44, E43, and E40. I have E42 and E41 on the screen, I really didn't use those very much but I try to use them every now and then just so every mouse wouldn't be exactly the same. But I'll just start with the darkest shade and then use the medium shade and then I'll blend it all out with the lightest shade. And I've never colored on craft cardstock before, certainly not with no line coloring. And I've always wanted to try it, so I thought this card would be perfect for fall to color these little mice and they're so adorable. So I'm using several sets if you've been with me a while, you know this is my favorite thing to do, is to combine lots of different sets. I absolutely love it. I think it's so much fun, and sometimes I'll try to make it simple, but I really can't help myself because all the stamp sets seem to go together so well. started making this card, and I looked at the Autumn Mice card for Newton's Nook. I think it's adorable, 
and it inspired this card. But then when I started lining them up, I thought it'd be really cute to grab some of this older sets as well. So this card is no different. So I'm using images from Autumn Mice, as well as Garden Mice, as well as Pumpkin Latte and Harvest Tales. I'm still trying to figure out how you guys would like me to edit these videos because I like to keep most of what I do in the video, but sometimes I can just get a little carried away because I really enjoy coloring and I don't want it to seem monotonous for you guys. So now I'm going to use some R22 and R11 to color the inside of the ears and the nose. And then I will begin on my other mouse. I'm not going to show all the coloring on this, but I will share all the color combinations that I use. I really try to keep this fairly simple. The coloring took some time. But for me, I, this is what I love most. I love coloring the images the most. So I love doing that. But you'll see here, I'm just going along and I'm taking my medium shade and I'm blending out the darkest shade. And then I'll go in with E40 and blend that all out. Now I'm going to start coloring the pumpkin. And I started with YR18, YR15, and Y38 to color all the orange colored some pumpkins and I also colored some leaves. So I will just start with the darkest shade again and then blend out with the medium and then start with the lightest to blend it all out. I also did a little of tip to tip coloring with my Copic markers which I also do. I just kind of borrow from the other shade to get a to get an even better blend. I don't know why I have always meant to color Copics on this um, craft cardstock, but I had never tried before, and so I have always wanted to try that. And I found that the great thing about using this cardstock is you don't have to blend as much because it's almost like your first layer is already there. For me, I found I needed to do my dark layers and not use as much color because it turns dark really fast. And to me, what makes cards look good is the contrast. And so it made it easier to get too dark too fast. And then I will color the sunflower. And again, I go with the darkest shade first. And after I'm done coloring, I knew I was gonna go in with colored pencil because again, I can't help myself. I love adding the little detail at the end but I really think it makes a big difference. I'll color the stem of the pumpkin and then I will go back and start coloring the leaf. And again, I'm using the YR18, YR15, and Y38, the same colors that I use for the pumpkins. And I will blend all that out and then I do go back later and adds a bit of shading. And now for the mushroom. I love this little mushroom. This was, as much as I love the little pumpkins, I wanted to add the mushroom. And I really was searching for some little mushrooms to color. I don't know why, but for fall, I think the mushrooms just add a little something. So to color the mushroom, I started with R59 for my deepest shade, and then R39 and then R35. And I use these same red colors for the red leaves and everything red. And I try to kind of balance out to have a little bit of color everywhere. So I'll start with the deepest shade, R59, and then I will pretty much go along and outline everything. I really didn't try to be too perfect because I knew I was gonna go back in with colored pencil, and the colored pencil that I knew, I knew the colored pencil that I used would give me a little room for error because it will pretty much cover up any of those lines. Then I'll take my media shade, the R39, and then go in with R35 to blend all that out. And now I'll use this little brown color to color these little acorns that I think are so adorable. I actually wish I would have put another one under the mouse that's holding the sunflower. So I'm using E39, E19, 
and E97 to color the brown of the acorns as well as the inside of that sunflower. And this really went by pretty quickly, but again, I really enjoy coloring. I love combining stamp sets and I love coloring them all up. I wanted to color the stem of the sunflower as well as the scarf using YG99, YG97, and YG95. That will be all of the green. I used that for the stem of the pumpkin as well. And so I will color in the scarf of that little mouse. And then I will just do the stem of the mushroom. And for that, I'm using E42, E41, and E40. I tried to keep it lightest on the inside and then darker on the outside. So it would look a little more shaded. Try not to worry about a light source so much but I kind of can't help myself and I always seem to put my light source coming from the right upper hand side. After I've colored all the images, I'll go in with my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. I'll use the black to color the little eyes and then after I color all the eyes, I'll start doing some shadows. And this is the part I love, and I don't think you really need to do this, but to me, I this is what makes this a labor of love for me because I love going in and adding more shadows and more details. So I'm using my colored pencils to do that, and then I'm also going to use this cream, and I thought it really made it pop when I use cream color. And this is, if you haven't tried any polychromos, I highly recommend you try the cream. And it's funny because the cream and the black I seem to use the most. After I'm done coloring the card, I'll go ahead and add the sentiment. And to stamp out the sentiment, I use the beautiful fall fringe stamp set that I had made a previous card with. So for my card base, I wanted to be on some red cardstock. I thought it would look really pretty. For a little added detail, I wanted to go ahead and use my blender brush and I use some aged mahogany distress ink to do some simple ink blending with the falling leaves stencil from Newton's Nook. And I thought this really added a lot and then I just popped up my card panel onto the card base with some fun squares and that will complete the card today. So I really hope you enjoyed this card and I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for watching.